in this lesson, we will start to talk about loops and repetitions. We'll combo our knowledge of lists as well as teaching the computer to make choices together with the for loop in this lesson to start to write more sophisticated code. We will introduce you to the for loop, the range function, and the continue keyword. For those of you who may be joining me for the first time, my name is Nelson Lim and I help other CG practitioners to create more, earn more and live more on this YouTube channel as well as on my website nelsonlim.com. Remember to hit subscribe and like the video if you want to see more of this sort of content come onto the channel. In this video, we will be talking about loops and repetitions. Computers are good at repetition, while we human beings, we get bored very quickly doing the same thing. In fact, computers are able to repeat a process very quickly and consistently. Anytime you need something that needs to be done many times or executed perfectly every time, you will most likely want to write a script for it. This is a great way to identify all of the boring things that you do as an artist that you can soon start to outsource to a script you wrote. So here's how we tell the computer to repeat a process many times. Let's introduce you to the for loop. In this example, I've created a list, and within that list, I have an item called cube, an item called sphere, and an item called comb. And I've assigned this list to a variable called geometries. So let's start typing the following. For geo in geometries, colon, enter, space, 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 print, geo. So that's four white spaces. Let's take a look at the result of this for loop. It prints cube, followed by sphere, followed by cone. So now let's explain what this for loop is doing and break it down. The first syntax of the for loop is the for keyword. This is a special keyword, so please don't use it for variables or functions. Um, this is a special keyword and holds special meaning for Python. Followed by geo, which is a temporary variable that we create that only occurs and lasts within the context of the for loop. Followed by the in operator, geometries. Python makes it really easy to actually understand its syntax. For geo in geometries, print geo. So what is essentially happening over here? The for loop will start to loop through the list of geometries. It will go through every item in the geometries list. So for the first item in the geometries list, it's going to assign the temporary variable called geo to cube. And it's then going to print cube, or it's going to print geo, and so that means it prints cube. The second time round it loops, it's going to go to the second item on the list, which is sphere. And it's going to assign geo to sphere. And it's going to print geo, and hence that's why we got sphere over here. Finally, for the third iteration of the loop, it's going to assign geo to cone, or it's going to assign cone to geo. And it's going to print geo, which is why it prints cone. So this is what is actually happening in the for loop. The wonderful part about for loops in Python and lists is that if you're familiar with any other previous programming languages where you may need to create a counter and increment that counter every time as you go through an item on an array and all, you don't need to do any of that. In Python, if you supply a list to a for loop, it's going to iterate through the list until it is done. And so that makes the syntax really easy to understand and really easy to follow. This is a very commonly used way of looping through a sequence of data like a list. You should memorize this syntax because you'll be using it all the time. So remember how we said that strings are a sequence of characters? Well, we can use the for in syntax to loop through them as well. So here's the result. All it does is it loops through each character in the quote, I'll be back, assigns it to the temporary variable called char, and it prints it. So what if you need to repeat an instruction a certain number of times and you just don't have a list to iterate through. We can use the special inbuilt function called range. Let's try it. 
four, counter in range five, colon, four spaces, print, counter. So the result of this is shows us that it starts to print from zero to four, which is five iterations. And with each iteration, it's actually storing the result of range into counter and printing it out. So it prints zero, one, two, three, four. Now, what if I didn't want to start from zero and I want to start from one and I want to end at five? You can do it this way. So bring up the range and you can specify, let's start at one and let's end before six. Again, this is one of those little gotchas that you just have to get used to. Let's look at the result. So what it's going to do is it's going to start from one and it is going to end before six. So it prints one, two, three, four, five. What if you wanted it to loop through a range of numbers, but in increments of two? You can actually specify that in your range and say, let's go through a range of numbers from one to six, but in increments of two. Let's look at the result. And so it starts from one, increments two and goes to three, and then five. And at its next increment, it's already exceeding um, six. And so it will never print anything out. So I'm really excited about this example. Now this is where all of our previous learning is going to stack on each other and we can start to combo the knowledge we have learned about making choices with our loops. In this example, we are going to add conditions to our loops to determine when a block of code is executed. So I've already got my list of geometries and a for loop started. I'm going to type if geo equals to sphere colon enter. Now I'm going to do four space indent. And I'm going to do another four space indent because this is a block of code that is going to happen within the if statement if geo is equals to sphere. I'm going to type the keyword continue. Let's see what it does. Hit enter, go to the next line. Let's do four spaces and type print geo. Let's run the code and see what happens. So in this example, we want to skip printing the word sphere. And let's break down and step through the code and the for loop to see what it's really doing. When we first go through the loop in iteration zero, the geo is cube. And because it is Q, it steps through the if statement and it's going to compare. If geo is equals to sphere, it is not equal to sphere because it is cube at the moment. It's not going to run this statement or the logical block that's indented after the if. So instead, it gets out of that if and it continues running print geo. So it does actually print Q. At iteration one, geo is sphere. So when it is equals to sphere and it hits this if statement, it's going to evaluate as true. And if it evaluates as true, it's going to process and run this continue statement. Now continue is a special keyword. It's a keyword that is used in Python. And all it does is it simply skips the rest of the iteration of the loop and starts from the beginning in the next iteration. So because we said continue, it's actually going to skip running anything else remaining in this for loop and go to the next item on the list. So the next item on the list is now going to be cone and it prints out cone. So it's conveniently skipped printing out sphere. So in this example, we combine an if statement that we've learned from the previous lessons to make our instructions to repeat much more flexible and powerful. Hey guys, question of the day. What are some things you do all the time on the computer that you could probably write a script for? Well, share them with us on the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Finally, if you like this video, remember to hit the like button so I know what kind of content to produce more of and I'll see you in the next video.